All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining me today. It's been a beautiful week so far. Sun's out. Well, sun's out too much. <laughs> we need some rain. Um, let's see here. So this month, you'll see on here on the screen, um, our topic is on the inventory app. So last week, Thursday, uh, we released an update, or actually two weeks ago, we released an update which added um, a new home screen and some improvements to the issue inventory function. Um, and the real purpose of that is to make it easier for you to navigate um, and to provide you more visual cues on what to tap in order to go from screen to screen. So. If you haven't done so, here is the release notes. This is available on Salamander Live and Salamander University. I highly recommend you go through this, but we are going to uh, walk through all of this in today's training. So this kind of just gives you a, a brief uh, look on what was changed on the issue inventory function. We did do a bunch of bug fixes as well within this release. So I just wanted to uh, spend some time to go through the inventory app. We're going to go through everything within the inventory app, not just the uh, the changes that we've made, but we'll, we will also run through the return side as well as the adjust uh, inventory side of the inventory app as well. Now, at any time during the training, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Uh, you can also use the uh, chat function to send a message through if you prefer to use uh, that instead. All right. So before um, we go ahead and get started, um, I just wanted to do a, again, quick overview of what the inventory app is. Um, there there can be some confusion when we say asset management and, or inventory management. There's actually two components to this. Um, one is the inventory related functionality that's within the equipment database in Salamander Live. Uh, those additional inventory functions, what they do is they allow you to create consumables. Um, you're able to uh, create alerts, which are like notifications for specific actions that you have to do for a specific piece of equipment. Um, and then, of course, there's a bunch of um, inventory related reports. So everything that you do within the inventory app, all of that's going to be relayed up to Salamander Live, and then you can go into Salamander Live, pull those reports, and then see uh, what equipment has been issued out, who they were issued to, when they were issued out, when they were returned, things like that. So we will touch base back at the end here on those reports and where they're, lo where they're located, especially for those that are newer to um, the asset management function for Salamander Live. Um, now, on the other side of the inventory management is the application. So, with the application, this is going to be downloaded onto your smartphone. So, it's going to be Android or iOS, or you can put it onto a tablet or iPad. And what that application allows you to do is it allows you to issue out your equipment to people. It allows you to return those equipment that have been issued out. And then it also allows you to do a basic audit or adjusting of um, your inventory. So you can um, take pictures. You can... Um, change the statuses of the equipment, and then of course for your consumables, you're able to edit the quantity on hand. So those are just some of the features that we'll be walking through today. All right, so are there any questions on this piece here before we move on into the actual uh, walkthrough and training of the inventory app? Okay, I don't see anything. Perfect. All right, let me get my mirroring application up here, and then we'll go ahead and get started. If you want to follow along, please feel free to do so on your uh, phone or your tablet. All right, so I am using an iOS device. Just note that the uh, inventory app, the functionalities are pretty much the same across both platforms. You're going to notice some changes, I mean, some differences between the two. Again, we can't make everything exactly the same because of the uh, different requirements that Android and iOS have, but for the most part, the look and feel should be pretty much the same. 
So when you log into the inventory app, if you've used this before, you'll notice that it's changed. So this is the very first thing that we did in here was we added a menu function. So in here, when you log into the inventory app, it's going to immediately take you to um, a home screen that has your menu options where you can issue items, you can return items, and you can adjust items. At the very top right, you're going to see an option for you to log out. So again, this is one of the big changes that we've made. Now, if you um, log in, you may also see a splash screen, which has like a big yellow salamander on there. So again, you may see that. It'll pop up very, very briefly, and it just, again, it's just on lag time and on how fast your application is loading. So it's going to be based off your internet connection. Again, it's not saying that anything is wrong with your phone. It's just giving you a, a splash page instead of a, um, a boring loading um, um, icon, okay? So first, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look on the issue item side. So this is where the, that uh, release that we did two weeks ago is really focused on. So it's this piece right here. Now our next release uh, for the inventory app is going to focus on the return side. So that's our next piece that we'll be um, looking at in, in the next couple of months when we release that. All right, so issue item. So if you do that, you're going to notice that it takes you into the screen that you're very familiar with, which is the issue screen. So on this issue screen, you'll notice that pretty much things are the same, except you're going to notice some differences here. So at the very top, you're going to still see your filter uh, icon. You'll still see your search function. But you're also going to see this help menu. This uh, question mark, if you tag, tap on that, that's going to be your inventory help. So it just kind of gives you... Um, some basic steps on how to add items to the cart. So for example, if you're new to this and you're unsure sure how to add items, you can tap on that help, help button and it'll kind of walk you through some, some uh, directions on how to add items. Other things you'll notice on here is you'll see a uh, hashtag or the uh, numbers uh, icon and then a plus icon. So this is something that we've changed as well too. So instead of showing the quantity what we've done now is we've changed those to actual reflect the items. So for example, if an item, um, if you have the item uh, set in the system in your database as a non-consumable item, you will see a plus icon there. Okay, so non-consumable means that you've got one of that item with that ID number. So if you tap on that, so I'm going to tap on that right now, I'm going to tap on this 3.5 millimeter earpiece. If I tap it, it's going to remove it from my issue list and it's going to put it into my cart. So you see at the bottom there, you now you have the cart there. You also have the scan function on there too, so that hasn't changed. The difference on here is that you don't have um, an option for you to select the person. So we move that into the issue cart side. Doesn't mean that you can't scan a person and sign them to the cart. It's just that for the manual add of that, that's going to be done on the issue cart side. Okay. Um, for a actual um, a consumable, you'll see in here for the consumable on here, you'll see that uh, next to each consumable item, there'll be a hashtag on there. And I apologize on the pictures on here. We actually just did some training and uh, the group had a, a great time changing the pictures in here. So <laughs> I haven't had a chance to go in there and change those, but uh, hopefully those pictures make your day today. Um, so um, in here, like for example, for these 30-gallon trash bags, I'm going to go ahead and tap on the uh, that button. What's going to happen is you're going to see an add a cart uh, pop-up window. In there, it's going to tell you exactly how much you have available. So this is how much you can you can issue out. Okay. So in here, you're going to see the quantity. So this is the field and what you would want to issue out to this person. So this is the quantity. So in here, I'm just going to put the quantity five. I'm hearing some background noise. If you haven't done so, please uh, mute yourself. I'm just going to go through this list. All right, thank you. So I'm going to type five and then apply. Just note that you cannot issue out more than what you have available. So for example, if I do 866 and I tap apply, it's going to tell you that your number is greater than 864. So you can't issue out more than what you have um, in stock. Okay. So I'm going to tap apply. And my 
my program is not updating. It's a little bit slow on, 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 the, on the screen side, so I apologize, and that will refresh my screen there. So now I've got six items in here. So again, as you guys know, on the issue screen, this is going to list everything that you have access to per your uh, user permissions. So all equipment, both consumable and non-consumable that you have access to, and it'll list everything in alphanumeric order. Okay, so you can scroll through your list this way to try to find items, but I, I don't recommend that because you know if you've got thousands of items within your your inventory database, the last thing you want to do is scroll through your list. So this is where these functions come in, and then they'll uh, play a big role in helping you uh, really narrow down what you're specifically looking for. So again, this is a manual app. So there's another way you can add items, which is by scanning, which is the easiest way to add items into cart is by scanning. Um, inventory barcode. So that's if you were, um, if you've um, gone to Salamir Live, you printed out inventory labels, you labeled all your equipment, you're able to scan those in. Or if you printed a inventory book where you have those inventory labels or inventory barcodes available, you can scan those into the system. What I'm showing you here is just a manual process just in case if your items don't have a label that you're still able to go in here and add items to, uh, to issue out. So the first thing we're going to look at is going to be this um, search function. So this is going to be uh, searching for specific items. So in the search function, what you can search um, query you can search for is um, item name and then the organization. So that's um, really what you're able to do in here. So I'm going to just type in truck in here. So I put in truck, so when I typed in truck, you'll see in here the item name. Anything that has truck in the item name will appear in here. Okay. So I'm just going to tap on this Musu truck number one. You'll notice that all these have pluses, so these are non-consumable items. So again, if I tap on that, it's going to remove it from my list and add it to my cart. Okay. So if you want to do another search, simply tap, tap the X. So you see in here, tap the X on there and then type in the new search on here. Um, let's do helmet. Tap go. When I type that in, you'll see that it's going to pull my list of matching in here. So in this case, I'm going to tap this bike helmet. And then you'll see in here, helmet, helmet XL. So I've got that added into my system as well too. So that's a consumable item. So if I tap on that, it's going to show me I've got 100 available to issue out. In this case, I'm going to issue out one, tap apply. So if you want to get out of your search um, function here, just simply tap the X and then tap it one more time to clear it. Okay. So it's cleared out. So now I've got nine items in my cart. Uh, the other option that you have on here is to filter. So if you tap on the filter icon, you're able to filter by category, by organization, and or by parent. So the category field is something that you would have to set within Salamander Live. So this is something that you, um, as the data uh, entry person, would have to go in here and create. So let me just show you guys where these uh, fields are located for those that may not be too familiar with uh, Salamander Live here. So I'm just going to move this over here real quick here. Let me go to my equipment database. I just want to show you where this is at. So I'm going to look at this uh, 3.5 millimeter earpiece. Click the pencil icon. So you see at the bottom here, or um, under the profile is where you'll see categories. So this is something that you would have to create for all of your, your um, equipment or an inventory items. So in here I've got a bunch of them in here. I put these 3.5 millimeter earpieces under a electronics category. You can create these. This is an open text field, so you can create whatever you want in here. The other um, filtering um, option is by parent. So um, in Salamander Live you have the ability to set your um, set a parent-child relationship with all your equipment. Basically what that means is that you're able to link all your equipment together. So for example, on a truck, you may have a compartment. Within that compartment, you have these tools um, or a toolbox. And then within that toolbox, you have specific tools. So you can create that linkage so that those specific tools in that toolbox belong on this, this particular uh, vehicle. 
So you can create that, if, especially if there's auditing that you need to do, verify that you've got the, the right equipment on a, um, a specific vehicle. This is how you can, how you can do that, okay? So this is that parent field. So let me uh, move this back and over here. So for category, in this case, if I type in, so if I start typing in a, uh, a, a letter, it's going to pull up any categories that start with that letter. So for example, for E, I've got a electronics category and engine category. So in this case, I'm going to tap on electronics. Now you can filter by multiple fields if you want to. You can filter by category, organization, and parent, or you can categorize by two of them or by, by, by one of them, okay? So I'm going to filter by just by electronics. I'm going to tap apply at the very top here. So you see that apply there. I'm going to tap apply. Your issue list should update and it should only list all items that have been put into the electronics category. So into that category that you've that you've selected. You'll notice at the filter icon, you'll notice that there is an X next to that. That's a good indicator to let you know. So it's a visual cue to let you know that you've got a filter set, that this is not the entirety of your inventory um, database. Okay. So in this case, if you want to add an item, simply tap on that. Now within the issue list, you can still view the details of an item. So if you're unsure um, and you want to view some, some of uh, the details for it, simply uh, tap on that and it's going to pull up the details for that piece of equipment. So it'll show you if there's a picture associated with it, the status. Um, obviously the status on here is going to be available. Any other status would not appear in your issue list. Um, you'll see the organization it belongs to, the ID number, and any other profile information. So this is a real basic profile, didn't have a lot of information, that's why it's pretty blank in here. Now, under this screen, you are able to take and upload a photo. So this icon right here, you're able to tap on that. And then you're able to take a photo or choose one from the gallery. Now, I do have to... Um, uh, let you guys know on this, we when we released this two weeks ago, um, after the release, we had found out that uh, there were some issues with the pictures. This is just for iPhones only. So Android works fine, but for iPhone, for some reason, um, the pictures that you take are not taking and they're not uploading into the actual app. They seem to be uploading into Salamander Live, but for some reason they're not updating into the actual inventory app. So I just want to put that out there and let you guys know if you're using this and you see that that's happening, just let just just know that we are working on that and that will be fixed within our next release. So for example, I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to take a picture of my, uh, my pen here. Take a photo. Here's my pen. Take the photo, use the photo, and it, it updated this time. But if you try to re, um, try to uh, replace it, it may not work. So again, it's not 100% that it's going to work. You'll have times in which you'll try to uh, upload a photo or take a photo, and it's not taking. So in this case, it took, so very good. All right, so to get back to the main issue screen, just tap back. You'll notice that we're, it's bringing us back to our filtered list if you want to clear that out. Simply tap the filter icon, and then you can tap the clear. So to clear that, if you want to filter again by a different uh, 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 query, you definitely can do so. Like, for example, if you want to uh, filter by uh, parent. So in this case, you do have to set up that parent um, child relationship. I'm going to type in F. So in this case, if I type in F, I'll have, I have a bunch of stuff that has a parent already in here. So let's see, first aid kit. Uh, let's do first response kit. Let's see what happens on here. I'm not sure what I set up in here. Tap apply. Oh, there's no records for that one. Let's clear. Let's do let's do this fire truck. I have some stuff. Okay, so there's a bunch of axes in this fire truck. <laughs> Looks like some um, some uh, axes and and back hose, which that doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna clear on this. Let me choose a different one that may make better sense. There we go. Here's an axe in that compartment too. So just notice when you are filtering by parent, the parent does not appear in your filtered list. Okay. So if you wanted to add that fire truck, you'd have to add the fire truck. And then from this screen, if you filter, then you can add all the children that's underneath that fire truck. So 
Um, just make sure that you guys know that. Now we are working on some changes for that to make it easier for you to uh, select the parent and all its children. So that again, that will be something that will be worked upon in our next release as well. So in this case, I'm going to add all these. I can add all. I, I don't need to add the compartment. I add the compartment on accident. So I'll show you how to delete that and how to remove it from the actual cart. So in this case, I'm going to clear this and I'm going to apply to the, so that I can go back to and have my uh, main list in here. So I'm now back to my main list. There's no filter set. There's no search function. Um, if you wanted to scan um, your inventory in to issue out to someone, just make sure you have your barcodes available. So again, that was a manual uh, way. Now here's the scan uh, process. So to scan, simply tap on your scan button. Now if this is your very first time using the inventory app, you're going to get a little pop-up that asks you whether or not you're going to allow the application to have access to your camera. Make sure you tap yes or OK or accept. If you don't, um, your your scan option is not going to work. You'll need to go into your phone settings, and then you'll need to go to the tag app, and you're going to have to allow for the camera. Okay, so there's if you do actions uh, type in or tap no, then you'll have to do those extra steps. Okay. All right, so I'm going to tap the scan button. I've got some barcodes on here. I'm just going to scan in first barcode. You'll see in here reflective vest added to cart. There's that. Hoping that I can find something that's already been issued. I'm just going through my list. Okay, perfect. Uh, I thought I had something that was issued out already. Okay, so perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. So I scanned this barcode, and there's a little message that pops up in there that says, hey, this item that you scanned was marked out of service. So in this case, you have the ability to take it out of service and add it to a cart. So what it's doing is just doing all that trans those transactions in the back end if you decide to add it to the cart, okay? So what we're going to do is I said, yes, I want to take it out of service. It seems like someone forgot to move it back in service or make it available, so I'm going to add it to my cart. Once you do that, camera stays active, okay? So I'm going to scan in some... Um, consumable items. You'll see in here I scan a consumable item. When you scan a consumable item, it's going to be the same as that pop-up that you saw when you were tapping that hashtag. So in here it says that there are 65 available. How many do you want to issue out? So in this case, I'm going to type in two and I tap apply. Same thing. Camera stays active. I'll show that one more time since it was pretty quick. So those six volt batteries. This is a triple A battery. So in this case, I'll type in 10. Tap apply. If you want to get it out of your camera uh, mode or your scan session, simply tap the back button at the very top. If you have a physical back button, you can tap the physical back button. But if you're all, all touch screen, you'll see that there's a back button at the very top. If you tap on that, that should take you back into your issue screen. Okay. Once you're like, okay, I'm pretty much done with, um, with adding my items, you can go to the issue cart. Okay. So the issue cart, so when you're issuing out equipment, everything goes into a cart summary. You kind of have to view. It's kind of like shopping online, right? You buy some items, it throws into a cart. You verify that those are all the items that you want before you purchase. Same thing with this. You're going to um, review all the items, make sure that those are all the items that you're looking at issuing out to the individual before you actually complete that transaction. So in this case, I'm going to tap the, uh, the cart. So where it says 32, tap the cart. It's going to take me to my issue cart. So in here, you'll see at the very top, you'll see that there's a scan function in there, same as before. So you're able to scan in more um, items if you forgot them. Or you can also scan in a person's barcode if you want to. You can do that from the main screen as well. And then you'll see that there's another um, help button. So this is going to be different. So this help button is for the issue cart itself. So if you tap on that, it's going to um, give you tips on how to manage the cart. So in this case, if you want to manually select a person, so let's say uh, the person that you're issuing out to does not have a Salamander credential. When I say Salamander credential, I mean a Salamander ID tag that was printed from Salamander Live or Rapid Tag and or Command. Okay. So I'm just going to select the person on here just so that you guys can see this process. So again, this is pulling from your Salamander Live database. So the database that you, per your user, has access to. So it's going to pull everybody in here um, in alphabetical order. 
You can go through your list and select who you want, or you can actually search for a person. So in this case, I'm going to type in um, Andrew. Tap search, and there's two in the system. So I'm going to do um, I was looking for Andrew Grill. We may have his name wrong. Let me see. I was looking for someone specific, but let's do Eric. There we go. So let's do Erica. Let's just add her. To add her, simply tap on her name, and now she's added to the actual cart itself. Now, that's the manual process, but you can also do the scan function here as well, too. So if the person has their uh, ID tag, you can scan them instead. So in this case, what we're doing, since Erica is already added to the cart, we're going to replace her. So I'm just going to tap the scan button. I'm going to activate my camera. And now I can just scan the new barcode. In this case, it says, do I want to replace Erica with Greta? You can cancel. You can tap replace. So in this case, I'm going to tap replace. You'll notice that your camera stays active, which allows you to scan in um, additional items if you need to. So in this case, I'm going to tap back. So I've got Greta in there. Um, underneath that, you have the capability to select an event. So with every issuance that you do within the inventory app, you have the ability to link that issuance to an actual event. So this, this event has to be an active event, means that it's got to be in progress. If that event has ended, you're not going to see that list when you tap on select event. What this really does is it allows you, um, there is an, a report called the inventory history report that appears um, within the events dashboard in the reports that allows you to see all the inventory, so all equipment, all consumables that were issued out for that particular event. And it's going to also provide you a cost value as well, too, on how much it costs to have all those pieces of equipment um, issued and used for that particular event. Okay. So here's all the events I have. The, the newest one I have on here um, is from um, June 10th. So I don't have one that's specifically for today, but if I did, I would select that. So I'm going to just show you guys a, a sample on here. I'm just going to tap on the drill from June 10th. Once I do that, you'll see that the um, drill has been added. Now, unlike before, if you make a mistake and you want to delete this, you, um, swiping does not work. You have to tap on it again, and then you'll see that there's a clear... Um, button at the very top right. So if you want if you made a mistake, you're like, I don't I don't want to connect it with this with an event, just tap the clear button. Okay. So that's again another change that we've made. Now in here you'll see that you've got it'll show you right here the total you're issuing out is 32 items. So you can go through your list on here. If you make a mistake, like for example I had that um, compartment two, I don't want to issue that. If you want to delete something, remove something from your cart, simply swipe left to delete it. Sorry, there's a lag on my, com uh, my computer to my phone here. Um, for Android, um, if you swipe left, you do have to tap the uh, delete button. For iOS, if you swipe, you can swipe all the way to delete it and remove it. Okay. From here, if you make a mistake and you entered in the wrong quantity, you can change the quantities on here as well too. Like for example, the 6 volt batteries, um, you'll see that the uh, numbering is in green, that means it's something you can edit. So I'm going to tap on the 2. It's going to pop up the uh, change quantity window. In that case, I'm going to put that in here as 4. And then tap apply. It's going to change your quantity and then, and then change your issue number at the very top here as well too. Once you verify that you've got all the items that you need in here and everything looks good, all you need to do on here is tap issue. Of course, if you want to clear the cart and start over, you could tap clear. So tap issue. Once you tap issue, you should get a screen. If I can get it up on here. Okay, perfect. So you should get a uh, issue success screen that shows you a list of all the items and the quantities that were issued out. Okay. And then at the bottom on there, you're going to see um, a return to cart. So to return to cart, simply uh, tap uh, return to cart. And then it looks like it's cut off on there a bit there so let me just write that down and make sure that that we get that fixed as well too all right okay 
So I'm going to tap return to cart. Once you return to cart, it's going to take you back into the issue cart there. You'll see that the event that you selected stays. So this is going to stay for all your, uh, your next issuances. Of course, if the next person you're issuing out is not going to be part of that event, you can basically just remove that. But you can do everything from this screen. You can select a person. You can scan all your items. You never have to leave the issue cart screen at all to go back to that um, issue screen unless you're looking at manually adding items. You'll notice that when we've made uh, changes on here where there's a back button now. Again, those are the, the little visual cues that we've added on here to help you better navigate this application. Because before, it didn't, there wasn't really nothing, and you just had to know that you have to tap that gray area at the very top. So in this case, we, we put this back button on there to let you know that to go back, you tap the back button. Okay. We'll tap back one more time to go back to the return screen. So is there any questions that you guys have on the issue item screen or the issue cart, any, on any of the changes that we made with this, uh, with this uh, past release? Okay, no questions. All right, so we'll just continue moving along then. So next on here, what we're going to take a look at is the return item. So this is going to be the, uh, the, uh, the feature where you're able to return the items that you've issued out. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. On the return screen, you'll notice this looks different. This, this has not been updated. Um, we are making a, a lot of changes to this in this next release that's going to be focused on this return screen itself. Um, I haven't really seen it, so I'm not able to give you too much information on that, but I just know that there's um, some really good changes that's happening here to make this um, um, more streamlined and, 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 and better for you to use. So on the return screen, this is going to list all the items that have been issued out and who they were issued out to. So it's going to go in alphabetical order. Um, so on this screen, you can do a manual return or you can do a, a scan uh, for the item itself. Like, for example, you'll see here Josh Adams. He's got an ambulance that's issued out to him. If he returns that, uh, for me to return that, I can either scan that, um, if that ambulance on that, that keychain, if there's a barcode on there, I can scan that into the system, or I can uh, just tap on it. So, for example, if I tap on ambulance, it's going to add it to my cart. So you see on here, one item in my cart. Now, for um, items such as this, you see here in Kelly Ander, she's got a bunch of items that's issued out to her. Okay, so if you verify, you go through, you're like, okay, yep, she's got that. She's returning all these different items in here, and you verify that they that they are there, physically there, and you can see them, and you want to return them. You don't have to tap on every single one of those items. What you can do is you can tap on her name, and they'll return everything. Okay, they'll return everything that was issued out to her. Um, so you can go through your list in here and, and do that. Like, for example, John Belding, I'm just going to uh, tap just some of the items. Let's say he's got all these different uh, radios on here. He's, he's ready to return the radios, but nothing else. So I can, this in this case, I would tap on each individual item, okay? So he still has all these other uh, equipment, um, and inventory issued out to him, but he's ready to return some of them. So in that way, that's how you can do that. Uh, for scanning, you can scan the items as well too. If you uh, if if the items were uh, were returned in that fashion. So in this case, let me see if I have. Uh... Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure I've got the barcodes correct. So this is for Greta. So this is for the person we just issued out to. So they're coming back. I'm scanning those items to return them back in. Okay, so I'm going to tap the, the scan button at the bottom right-hand corner. I'm going to activate the camera. And now I can scan in the items that are being ready to be returned. So you see in here, radio holster added to cart. So it's adding to your return cart. From here, you'll see there's an option for you to mark this as damaged. So if the item was damaged, oh, sorry about that. If the item was damaged, if the item was damaged, then you're able to, to tap on that and uh, mark it as damaged. Okay, let me do that one more time. Okay, so you can tap on, on damaged on there. I'm going to tap it one more time, make sure that it wasn't a bug. Okay, so it must have been just me. 
So on here it says, do you want to take the radio holster out of service? So you can do this from this screen by scanning the barcodes. There's also a way for you to do it on the return cart as well too, where you're able to mark things as out of service. So you can either tap yes or no. So I'm going to tap yes, and it allows you to scan in more items. So I'm just going to scan in the other items on there. Not sure why it's kicking me out of here. I apologize. See my internet connection is good. Do that one more time. Okay, that one's already returned. So if you scan something, it says it's already returned. It's there. I'm not sure why it is uh, crashing on me right now. I apologize. Let me see. It's not liking this. I might have to report this to uh, our development team on the crash. Okay. Of course, when we tested this, everything was working great. And after release and during training, it, it uh, is falling apart on me. So I apologize on this. But that scan button, we'll make sure that we do a uh, big test on this if we, uh, and then uh, put out a hot fix if we need to, if it's causing um, issues across the board. So we are on that. I've got it written down on here. So we'll make sure that we get that fixed for you guys. So, all right, so I've got my 12 items on here. I won't tap the scan button anymore just in case it crashes again on me. So in this case, so different from the issue screen, since we haven't done anything on the return side, um, you do have to tap on the gray area. So instead of the uh, cart function, so there's no actual cart icon. So this is your cart right here where it says 12 items. So if I tap on that, that's going to take me into my actual um, cart. So this is my return cart. So you'll see in here is the radio holster that I marked as out of service or damaged. Here's all the items that I have actually tapped to return. You'll notice that every item that you look at, re at returning is going to um, automatically go to return. What that means is that when you're returning item, it makes it available. So it's going to put it back into your inventory and make it available to be issued out to someone else. If you mark it as out of service, what's going to happen is going to mark it out of service and not make it available for someone to issue it out to someone else. Um, next to each item, so again, these are just fixed items, and I forgot to mention that, is that on your return screen, it's only going to list all fixed items, so non-consumable items that were issued out. Your consumable items will not be listed on that return screen. The reason why is because consumables are meant to be used up. But yes, are you able to return them? Absolutely. So if you have barcodes for those consumable items, you are able to return them and add them back into your inventory. Okay, so I'll show you that real quick here. Hopefully my, uh, my scan button is working. So in here, I'm going to just really tap on this. I'm going to mark on this radio real quick, that this radio. So I'm going to tap on that. It's going to pull up a menu. So you, this is where you can mark items as missing or out of service. So if I mark this as missing, what's going to do? It's going to add that to a missing category. So you see in here, this item is missing. This one's out of service. Um, if you make a mistake and you accidentally added an item that uh, that wasn't ready to be returned, you can basically swipe left again to remove it. So same thing, swipe left, and you can delete it, meaning remove it from your return cart. So let's see if my uh, scan button on here will work. I am going to do these AAA batteries. Okay. So in here, I've got AAA battery, so this is returning your consumable item. So it's not telling you that, hey, you're returning it from Greta Goodwin, right? It's just saying that this somebody is returning these um, consumable items, and it doesn't show you that it was in the system here, I mean, in the application, it's not showing that it's coming from Greta Goodwin. The system doesn't know that. It doesn't care for that. It just, it's, in this case, it's just saying how many of those items are being returned back into the system. Now, there are reports that you're able to see in there that who was actually issued out the items, but it's not going to say that they actually returned it back into, um, uh, or they returned it, and it's not going to have a tracking mechanism for that. Okay, so I just want to make sure that that's uh, clear and understand um, understood when it comes to returning consumables. You can't track it to who returned it. Um, if you want to do some um, extra work and say, okay, I issued out these consumable items to these five people, and um, out of these five people, 
you know, somebody's got to return. Someone, someone must have returned it. Who was it? You can, you can contact each person, try to find out who returned it. But there's just, just no tracking mechanism for returning consumables. In this case, all you're tracking is the, the quantity of items that's being put back into your inventory. So in this case, I'm just going to put in five. It's not going to show you that, you know, how many you have in your inventory. Just saying that you're returning five. I'm going to tap apply, and then it looks on here. You'll see in here it says AAA batteries added. So I'm going to tap the back button. It's going to take me back into my cart. So I should see on here, AAA batteries. You see on here, five is being returned. If I make a mistake and I said it's not five, they're like, oh, I found one more. I can tap on that. I can change that quantity to six and tap apply. Okay. Once you're satisfied with your return list, and these are all the items that's being returned for this person or for the multiple people that you're looking at returning, just simply tap return. Once you tap return, you should get a message that says all equipment returned successfully. Simply tap OK, and it's going to take you back to your return cart. So if you want to go back to the return screen, simply tap the, um, the gray area at the top here. So you see the little, little up icon there. Just tap on that, and it's going to take you back to the return screen, where you can now return additional items if need be. Okay. Any questions on the return side, minus the technical glitch I had there? Questions? No questions. All right. So I'm going to tap back. So the last item that we're going to look at is going to be the adjust item. So again, this is your your um, your audit function, if you want to call it that as well. So it's you're adjusting your your inventoried items. So to in order to use this uh, feature, this adjust item piece, you'll see that there's a scan button right there. That's a indicates to let you know that you have to scan an item. So in order to use this uh, this uh, function, this feature, you do have to have your items labeled, or at least have um, inventory um, barcodes available. Excuse me one second. <sighs> Sorry, I had a sneeze there, I apologize. All right, so in this case, um, I've got my barcodes available here. So you can scan in um, non-consumables and consumable items, OK? So I'm going to tap the Scan button. I'm going to tap on or scan a consumable item first. So in here, you'll notice for consumable items, you'll see that um, you've got the uh, ability to upload a picture. So you can change that picture if you want to. Let's see if this works. I'm Take a picture of my uh, little fuzzy uh, this keychain here. I'm going to use this photo. And there it is. It uploaded. So that seems to be working right now. Um, you'll see that there's an option for you to make comments. So on here, this is going to be for comments. So if you want to, if you change the quantity, so you'll notice on here that on, under the inventory section, the only quantity that you're able to edit on here is the quantity on hand. You'll know that because it's green. So if I tap on that, if I'm in my warehouse, I'm counting my 30-gallon trash bag, and I count the quantity, and I say, oh, I counted three times, and I have 865, not 859, you can change that quantity right there and tap Apply. In this case, if once you make the change on here, let me just... Once you make the change, this is where you can make comments if you want to on why you made that change or, or why you made it edit to, um, to uh, this actual uh, profile. So really up to you. On here, I'm just going to put found more. So these notes right here that you have, that you put in here, these changes will be available on a physical count report that can be found within Salamander Live. Um, you don't have to make comments if you don't want to. The system will let you know that you actually did an adjustment um, to the quantity. But if you want to make something that's more detailed and add notes, this is where you can do so. Now, pictures that you um, take on here or upload will be um, added immediately to the profile. Everything else that you do, for example, changing the quantity and adding notes, will not be done immediately. You do have to tap the check button. Uh, check um, icon at the top right here. So this has not been saved yet. The only thing that's been saved is the picture. So in this case, for me to ch save these changes, I have to tap the uh, the check mark. Once I tap the check mark, it's going to allow me to scan the next item. You'll see in here it says 
item, 30 gallon trash bags have been updated. So with this ID number. So next I'll scan a new barcode. So this is the uh, safety glasses. So this one has more information on here. So you'll see in here I could take a picture if I want to. With uh, non-consumable items, you are able to uh, change the status. So this can only be done for non-consumable items. You can't do that with, with uh, consumables because consumables, the status is controlled by the quantity on hand. So the only time you'll ever see out of stock is if your quantity on hand is at zero. So in this case, um, if I tap the little carrot, I can tap on that and I can change the status from assigned to available, out of service, or missing. Now you can't change a status on here from, uh, from available to assigned. Assigned can only be done through the issuing um, side of the inventory app. You can't even do uh, the assignment through Salamander Alive. The assignment can only be done through the inventory app, okay? So in this case, if I want to change the status on here, I want to make it available, I can mark that as available. This has not, again, changed yet. So in the system, it's, once I, I tap the check mark, it's going to mark, return it from whoever it's been assigned to, and put it back into the inventory. So that's all a couple transactions that's been done on the back end. You don't have to worry about those transactions. You'll be able to see that's been returned. It's going to show who returned it, meaning whoever lo was logged into the inventory app, to inventory app here and, and returned it or marked it as um, as, a, as, a, as available. Oh, here, sorry. Upload that. So in here, you can make a comment on here if you want to. So comment on here why you changed that status. So you're going to here, you can put returned. Well, if I can spell. Item returned. Item returned. And then you can put who you, you know, if you want to put like a name on there, you definitely can. You don't have to. So in this case, item return, I can tap done. You'll notice if there's a contact information in here, this is blue. That means you are able to tap on that and actually, um, um, actually uh, call the individual. So in this case, I'm going to tap the check mark. So check mark, it's been saved and updated. So I'm going to tap the back button to get out of this screen. So that's how you can get out of your scan mode is to tap the back button, which will take you back to the scan item screen, tap back again, it'll take you to the main options or home screen. So any questions on the inventory app, that's all the functionality that we have as of today. There are going to be more features, features that we will be adding to the inventory app much further down the line, uh, but that's what we have today. Any questions on what you've seen so far? If you want me to show you anything else within the inventory app, let me know. If not, we're going to go into uh, Salamander Live and take a look at the reports real quick. All right, no questions. It's a quiet group today. All right, so I am going to move this over here. I'm going to open up uh, Salamander Live, log in. All right, let me make this so it's bigger so you guys can see. All right, so zoomed in. All right, so. Um, for your inventory reports, there's two places in which you can find your inventory reports. One is going to be under equipment, and then uh, the other is through the events side. Okay, so under the events dashboard, there's going to be one report that you can find. But most of your inventory related reports will be under the equipment um, database. So if you tap on equipment, it's going to pull down all of your equipment inventory items. At the very top right there, you'll see that there's a report icon. If you tap on that, that's going to show you all your different reports that's available for equipment. So here's all your um, inventory related type reports. So you've got a full inventory report, you've got an issued inventory. So this is going to be specifically for the inventory app. So this is going to show you specifically who all have been um, issued out inventory. So you can look at all or you can go to a specific person to see what equipment has been issued out to them. So I can run report. So here's my report of all the items that have been issued out. So you'll see it shows a, a bunch of information on here. So it shows you uh, 
issue date, who is issued by, the item ID, item name, organization that those items belong to, and then if it was tied to an actual event. So you'll see in here it's tied to an actual event down here. So again, this is only going, so this report, this issue inventory report is only going to include non-consumable items. This does not include any consumable items that were issued out to these individuals. Okay, those are going to be viewed on a separate report. So for consumables, you'll see those are going to be down here. So these are going to be used, uh, uh, be by date range. So if you want, there's a detail uh, usage report and there's a summary report on here too. Let's look at the detail one. So you see here, it's a date range. You do have to put a date range in here. So I'll do for today's date. Just copy that, throw that in here, run report. Again, Excel format, and here's the list. So again, it shows you the date issued. You'll notice that the ID field, it kind of truncates that. So if you want to look at the ID numbers, you'll have to change that to number and then move the decimal point over so that you can see the full ID number. Just note that that's something that's defaulted by Excel. Um, so you want, if you want to do that, you'll have to change that. So you in here, um, the item name, how many were issued, who were issued by, and who were they issued to, and that person, uh, and, and which organization it belonged to, and feels tied to an event, and when the event started, and who started that event. And then if there's a cost function, you'll see that, or a cost related to that item, you'll see that cost per item on here as well too. Okay, so that is cons a detailed consumable report. The uh, Summary one, just a real, real basic, real basic. And then these ones right here, they are related to the inventory app, but they are also related to your uh, equipment manager, so people that are going in here, and um, because you are able to change the status through Salamander Live here. So like, for example, um, you see on here, this one's out of service. If I tap on that, I can change that to in service. So you see on here, there's a little you can actually click on that and you can change that to available, um, missing, or in service. The only one you'll see in here, assign is grayed out because, again, you can't assign inventory through Salamander Live. It's all got to be done through the inventory app. So that's why this report in here is going to be from um, changes you made within Salamander Live and the inventory, so missing and out of service. And then uh, the last one on here is the physical count report. So this is related to that adjust item screen. So those those um, inventory items that we scanned. So how it looks at this is counted and not counted. Okay, so counted basically means um, a item that you scanned. So if you scan that that item's barcode, it's going to put it into this counted category. If you did not scan it during this date range that you put in here, it will be under not counted. Okay, so I'm going to put for today's date again, run report. So this is going to be counted or items that I scanned in using the adjust inventory uh, feature within the inventory app. I'm going to tap OK, open up the report. It should show the two items or three items I, I scanned. Make this bigger. So here it is. There's the items that I had in here. Safety glasses, two of them, check in, available, trash bags. You'll see a bunch of information in here, okay? And cost-wise. Last but not least, under uh, the for reports, there is going to be one under the events side, okay? So under the events. We're going to take a look at this drill event, okay? So that's the one that we actually attached or linked those issuances that we did today to this drill event, okay? So there's a couple ways you can look at the reports. You can go into the um, that events dashboard, or you can just click the checkbox next to it and view the reports that way. Again, multiple ways in which you can uh, view the report information. So I'm just going to click on the uh, checkbox right there and then click the report icon, you'll see it's the fifth one down called inventory history. So this is the one report that does a combination and shows you all inventory, both non-consumable and consumable um, items that were issued out for this particular event. So this is the only report that's going to show that information. Let me make sure this is big. 
to see on here. So you'll see in here Rudy Avery. Here's all the items that were issued out to, to him. Here's what we did, Good, uh, Greta Goodwin. These are all the items that we issued out to her today. So you'll see in here it's going to show you, uh, let me, um, what am I doing here? View, let me freeze the very top pane here real quick. Um, oh, hold on here. So Greta Goodwin, you'll see on here, shows you who issued out. So it should show me, the time that it issued out, assigned. If it was returned, it was, if it was marked as out of service, it's going to show the time in which it was returned. And then, um, what did I do on here? Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Let me do that one more time. Let me do this right. There you go. So you'll see in here, current status, return by, like so who returned it, so if it was, when it was returned, so it shows military time on here, the ID, the item name, manufacturing make model, organization, um, quantity that was issued out. So you'll see in here any quantity that's above one generally is a consumable item, the cost, if there's a cost factor with that, if it was um, added to their profile, and then elapsed time, which goes in seconds on here, and extended costs. Okay, so this is, again, the one report that shows um, a combination of consumable and non-consumables that were issued out for a particular event. All right, any questions on the reports or inventory? None. All right. Well, the last thing I want to show you guys all then is um, Salaman University. So we did update. Um, so if you want to review what was all included in the release a couple weeks ago, you can go in here and look at the inventory app release, which is this one here, version 2.0.0. Um, if you want to look at the actual um, changes and you want to go through the uh, tutorials, you can feel free to do so. So you'll see in here the issue in inventory is going to be where it's mainly been impacted. So I would recommend you go through that video there. Um, all the documents has also been updated in here as well too. So the user guide on here, this one right here has been updated. Uh, the quick reference guide has also been updated as well too. So, so this one right here, version 4.0. All right. Other than that, I will um, also include either this training or next week's training. So we're redoing this whole training again next week, Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central. So if you have people that you want to attend this training and learn about the inventory app, make sure that they join that training. I will make sure to have one of uh, the videos um, available in here under the webinar recording. So we'll post that in here so you guys can review that anytime you, that you need to. Um, any other final questions before we end today's call? All right, with two minutes to spare. Good timing. No questions? All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining me on today's call. I really appreciate you guys uh, very, very much. Um, again, next month, I think, so next week is the, the – uh, the same training as today. Next month, if you want to join me, I am going to be covering how to create and share templates in command. So please come and join me on those. I'm, I'm doing two of them again, one on the 15th and one on the 21st. So if you're um, unfamiliar with command and want to know how to um, at least uh, create templates, feel free to join that. If you are a command user currently and just want to review, again, please join. Um, other than that, I want to thank you guys all so much. You guys all have a great day, and I'll talk with you guys either next week or next month. Take care.